I messed up. Now that's not something you'll hear me say every day because let's be honest, I don't usually make too many mistakes when it comes to computer building. But when something does go wrong, yeah, I'll admit it. Uh, this computer got screwed up, the build got screwed up and I'll have to tear it down and rebuild it in another case because uh, what ended up happening was I decided to cram too much hardware into this computer and not have enough proper cooling to cool down this computer. So uh, long story short, the water cooling solution ended up performing worse than you know something like air cooling would have uh, just because it was too little radiator space for the hardware. Now, let's just talk about the hardware, my original intent, and how we got to this point. So if you recall, I've got a very big tower PC that sits on my desk, my other desk, and usually I don't have a radiator issue because that computer has four 480 millimeter radiators, push-pull 60, 60 millimeter thick radiators, you know, coolings, dual loops, not a problem. But I wanted to have something that would sat on my desk scale down a little bit. So this is a mini ITX build. Uh, this is a Case Labs case. Um, no, you can't buy this anymore because Case Labs does not exist anymore, but I guess they might be coming back under another ownership. Uh, we'll have to see what happens with that. But you know, that's, that's a whole different discussion. This computer has configured, is, is configured with a 280 millimeter radiator in the front, and then it's got, also got a 120 millimeter radiator in the back. So 280 plus 120, usually that would be plenty for uh, most computers. In fact, 280 millimeter radiators are more than you know, 240, almost close to 360 in, in terms of square area. So that plus that 120 in the back, you're in between a 360 and a 420. So that's that's actually between a 360 and a 480 millimeter radiator. So that's that's quite a bit of cooling for both CPU and a GPU. However, the components that I decided to go with was uh, Intel 13900K, so problem number one, and then I had a 3090. GPU. Now, the 3090 GPU isn't actually the problem. The 3090 GPU uh, from EVGA, that's an FTW3 with an XOC BIOS pulling over 500 watts. That's the problem. Um, between those two components, you know, it's pulling over 700 watts, probably close to 800 watts when you're going all out. About 700 watts during gaming. So, so that's that's or more 650 to 700 during gaming. So that's quite a bit of heat you're trying to dissipate just in normal day-to-day -day use. And with that small area, um, that, was just, that was just too much for the cooling system. So the other components, uh, just real quick here, I had a Z790 mini ITX board from ASUS, the, uh, the Strix i board, great board. Uh, it has, it has you know, all the IO features that you'll want. Um, on the back, Thunderbolt 3, uh, Thunderbolt 3 and 4, USB 4, the whole shebang. Uh, if you want a mini ITX board, you might want to take a look at that board for, especially if you're going to Intel. As for the power supply, it's a Corsair 860AX power supply back from a few years back. 860 watts, yeah, I was really, really playing with fire there because, you know, 300 watts from the CPU, 500 watts from the GPU. That's almost 800 watts, right? <laughs> yeah, believe me, um, I, was, I was teetering on the edge. And in fact, I, it might have uh, shut down once or twice through overcurrent protection. Um, I wasn't sure if it was, it was that or if it was overclocking issues. Never went into the details because again, I was kind of overheating on this computer. So I built it all up, acrylic tubing, uh, custom cables, Looks pretty good actually, if, if, if you don't, if, if I do say so myself here. Uh, the pump that I decided to use was an EK DDC pump with the reservoir mounted on the uh, radiator. So it all fit in there pretty well. But again, the main problem was the cooling solution or the radiator space was just not enough. Um, and I ended up reaching t water temperatures I want to say excess of maybe 45 degrees C on, on the water. 
45 to 50 C and then you would I was seeing closer to 70 degrees 70 degrees C on the GPU decor so that's like a 20 degrees Delta on on the temper water water side and then uh, the CPU was of course maxing out at 100 degrees C because you know 3900k will just max out at 100 degrees C so uh, both the CPU and, and the GPU was really really hot in fact you know a, a, a air-cooled GPU these days is right around you know 70 degrees, 70 degrees C so you really wasn't getting the benefit from water cooling to drop that temperatures although I will admit it was relatively quiet because I ran the fans relatively quiet or low RPMs if I did crank it crank it up I probably could have gotten away with it but the whole point of water cooling a computer on a desk is to have it run quiet and cool and well Overall, my philosophy when it does come to water cooling is as long as I can run the fans quiet and I can get all the water radiators, you know, in there and all the water cooling components in there, I don't really usually care about what the temperature is. Uh, be it 60 degrees versus 50 degrees, it doesn't make much of a difference to me. Uh, again, my main priority is noise. So that's why it was kind of surprising with that mentality going in when I saw the temperatures as they were, um, and then of course the CPU thermal throttling um, under a load, well, clearly that's not gonna work. So the plan going forward here is I've got another case coming, and it's gonna be the XTA X Proto L open air case. So I'm sticking with mini ITX, going to be pulling all the components, putting it into an open air case with water cooling. This time I'm going to go with dual 280 millimeter radiators. And uh, with, it's a little bit more radiator space, but the main point is that it's open air. So it's going to be able to get that air, hot air out and then get that fresh air in. I'll probably heat up this room more than, more than the case, but uh, you know, but since it's open air, so, so, so that's that. But uh, that's the plan going forward and we're going to be really rebuilding that. I'm still sticking with a 13900K. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going with 13900KS because those are out now. I'm swapping that around and then trying to, trying to overclock that to you know, push, push 6 gigahertz on, on more and more than just two cores. Let's see how far we get with that. But anyway, uh, that's just a quick look. Yeah, this case, this computer... I had great plans for it, but it just didn't work out for me. So um, this is this is gonna be this is gonna be the, probably the last time you'll see this on the channel because um, I don't see this problem fixing itself or or whatnot. Um, oh, on a side note here, I do have a 4090 FE card in here now because that 3090 was just pulling too much power, pulling too much too much you know wattage. And, and heating up the case too much. I actually picked up a 4090 FE card. Right now it is sitting in there. It is not water cooled and it's actually running cooler than the 3090. In fact, the 4090 FE, and, and again, this is probably not for another video here, but the 4090 FE card will pull anywhere from 350 watts to 400 watts. If you're not cranking ray tracing and whatever just regular rasterization games that's actually not so bad when you compare it to that 3090 or even 3090 ti in fact the 4090 uh, for all the crap that it's been given about the power power draw and then the the higher wattage and the the cables melting is actually more efficient in my experience than the 3090 ftw3 that i have so that card goes back, the 3090 FTW3 water-cooled card goes back into the other uh, big tower case with the proper cooling. This one is gonna have the 4090. I'm gonna probably keep it air-cooled. And then, and just because the, well, again, we'll talk about that in another video because, because this video is, is kind of drifting on topic here. So anyway, uh, I'll make sure to link all of the components for this build down in the links below. If you have any questions about any of this, go ahead and ask them. I'll, I'll try to answer them if you've got any and be on the lookout. I've got a couple of videos lined up uh, for those, for the upcoming topics. 
So keep an eye out for those. As always, my name is Stan and I'll see you guys in the next one.